Hello, everyone. It's Juan Balmori here together with my colleague Hitesh Manwar. We are two of the PMs working in Outlook Add-ins team, and we are super excited to share with you today how to build Outlook Add-ins that integrate your solution seamlessly into your user Outlook experience. Okay, four main outcomes I want to take you out of this presentation. Number one, new stuff available for Outlook Add-in developers. That means new APIs in Mailbox 1.9 really single sign-on, etc. Second, among those new APIs, we want to highlight the value and scenarios you can implement using the append on send feature. You will find out how to use it properly. Third, I want you to learn about event-driven add-ins. Hitesh will share with you all you need to know to start using this exciting new type of Outlook add-in currently in preview. Finally, we want to show you a great example of event-driven add-ins with an online signature solution seamlessly, seamlessly integrated in Outlook. We invited a great partner to show it to you. And hopefully, you will get inspired on how to use these features to create or improve your existing Outlook add-ins. Let's explain Outlook add-ins with a real-life example. How many times have you been in a situation like the one shown in this email? It's a simple problem of trying to schedule a meeting among people not within my organization and hence with unknown availability. So instead of starting a lengthy thread among all participants to find the best time to meet, let's use an Outlook add-in to become more productive. Let me show you. While reading this email, please note that I have a couple of interesting buttons in my ribbon. These are known as adding commands. As a developer, you can surface these commands in a few places within Outlook. To check out that I have a find time add-in that allows me to reply with a meeting poll to find the best time possible to meet. When I click on it, it opens a task bank that lets me select a few potential time slots for the meeting. To help me select the best time slots possible, it shows my availability as well as other people within my organization availability. Please note that this task bank is actually a web application that it's running within Outlook that is using HTML and JavaScript. And it also uses our Outlook JavaScript library to get, for instance, all the recipients of the email so that, for example, we can use the graph to get my and my colleagues availability in the coming days. After I select a few time slots, I can actually reply with a survey to all the recipients. And then when they receive the email, they can actually open the poll and vote for their favorite time slot. And after we reach a common time slot, the meeting is automatically scheduled. And you see the difference? With just a few clicks, I was able to rapidly find the best time to meet. So in summary, Office Web Addings and Outlook Addings are a web application and an XML file that we describe as a manifest. And there are two cool things to highlight about Web Addings. Number one, that they are multi-platform, meaning that you write it once and then run it everywhere where Office runs. That means Windows, Web, Mac, Android, and iOS. And the second aspect that is really cool about add-ins is that it's very easy to deploy because you can deploy your add-ins to the store and end users can actually go to the store and acquire them or you can actually deploy them by an IT admin within Microsoft 365 using centralized deployment. You can distribute these add-ins to specific users or groups within your organization. One last thing here. The manifest is quite an important component of your solution because it describes how your add-in will behave within Outlook. And basically there are two types of add-ins that you can create today in Outlook. You can either create an add-in command. This is a type of add-in that will surface while reading or composing emails or appointments, or you can actually create what we call a contextual type of add-in. These add-ins help on the reading experience in Outlook and will activate upon detection of an entity like an address, a phone number, a URL, or a regular expression. Now, this is a type of adding command, as I showed you previously. You can surface the buttons in the ribbon, click on them, show a task pane, in this case, the Jira uh, look adding. Uh, and this is a type of contextual adding. And in this case, I have an address in the body of the email that I'm reading. And when I hover over that address, I can get additional context with this. In this case, you know, it's a map that shows me exactly where is this address. All right, so let's look at what's new in Outlook Addings. Here are some exciting news for Outlook developers. Number one, we are happy to announce as Office Platform team 
that single sign-on is officially GA. This is a feature that enables you to reuse the credentials used by the currently signing user and avoid the friction of asking for user and pa password in your add-ins. This works for web add-ins in Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and Outlook. Find out more details in the pointers at the end of this video. Secondly, uh, ScriptLab for Outlook is now available as well. If you've been using this add-in either in Word or Excel, it is now supported in Outlook. It's a very fun way to learn the JavaScript APIs we have. Uh, I will show you in a second how to use it. Uh, another good news here is that one of the most popular Outlook add-ins that we have in the store and you know, are the online meeting providers like Zoom, BlueJeans, among others. Well, we recently released updates you know, so that you can, so that users can actually create and join online meetings in seamless SETI native integrations in mobile devices, as you can see from these images. It's GA for Android, and it's now in preview as well in iOS. So this feature enables this type of add-ins to easily compose and join online meetings from Outlook Mobile. And finally, we finished the scope for the Mailbox 1.9 requirement set and it will soon be GA in Windows and Office for Outlook for the web. The main feature included in this requirement set is a pend on set, on send, but we are also including another few frequently requested utilities. So let's take a closer look about what's a pend on, what a pend on send is all about. So first of all, this is a top request from our community. And the idea here is that we are allowing Outlook, Outlook and developers to aggregate content after the user sends the email. This content can be either plain text or HTML. And there are many scenarios that you can accomplish by using this API. Among others, for instance, you're adding classifications or you're adding legal disclaimers uh, on your emails. But the important thing here is that you don't want the user you know, to be changing this content or removing it when they send an email. And so it's, this is at, at the core of what this feature is all about. Uh, so in order to add some precautions here, uh, if you, when you deploy these types of add-ins to the store, you need to include in the description of your add-in a full disclosure of the content that you're adding. That is gonna be validated and rejected if, if it's not complied. Uh, another aspect that is important here is that when you create an add-in using these APIs, you will have to declare in the manifest that you're using it. So let's take a closer look at what this means, how append on send works. And I also want to show you a little bit about Script Lab for Outlook. I'm in VS Code now, and actually I created a project in the interest of saving time with our Joe Office tool. It's basically a scaffolding tool that outputs a project that you can create for, for Outlook. And the project structure uh, you know, has the source code of the, of the add-in. And as I showed you previously, there's a very important file, which is the manifest file. In order to use the append on send feature, you need to make sure that in your manifest, you actually declare that you're gonna be using it. And for that, we use what we call extended permissions. So as you can see here, this element in the manifest is declaring that the add-in is gonna be using append on send. If I don't add this element to the manifest, this is not gonna work. Also make sure when you modify this project in, 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 from Joe Office that you need to add the version overrides 1.1. So basically you just need to add, you know, the overrides 1.1, uh, which is basically right here. Um, there you go. We have the version overrides element and this one's gotta be version 1.1. This element is included on that override, all right? And then that's pretty much it. After you can use the API as you can use it with, you know, you can use any other Outlook JavaScript API. So in this case, what I'm doing here is a task pane that is, uh, it's gonna have a button that it's calling append on send. And the code that I am appending in this case is a disclaimer for the email. So I have here some HTML with some uh, disclaimer content and some formatting in HTML as well. And basically what I'm doing here is that I'm just calling uh, context of mailbox dot item dot body append on send. I'm sending the HTML that I want to insert. I'm telling the API that I'm using HTML and then basically call the API, all right? So now this is gonna work like this. Uh, when I sideload the add-in into 
uh, Outlook, uh, when I create a new email, you will see that I have uh, Contoso adding right here, which is uh, the code that I just wrote. And this is the append on send adding. And in this case, let's pretend that I'm gonna send an email to a colleague of mine. I'm adding some confidential content here. And then let's assume that this is the content, uh, potentially inserted by the add-in as well. Uh, when I click on this button, I'm actually gonna be calling the code for append on send. Uh, this is obviously not visible in this email, but guess what? After the user clicks on send, uh, if I go to my send items, you will see that effectively I have a meal sent for him and this content was added on the email. All right, it's very straightforward. It's kind of a powerful scenario, super simple to use. Okay, now I want to do a quick demo about script lab. In this case, I have a script lab already installed. It's a group of, of, of uh, buttons is right here. And when I click on this button, what is gonna happen is that I'm actually gonna open the code editor for script lab. So this is basically a code editor that you can use to write uh, Outlook.js snippets. And by the way, this comes with a bunch of pre-canned samples that you can use to see how the API works. For example, you want to do body APIs, you want to get recipients, you want to get notifications, attachments, etc. This is a full, there are a bunch of examples here. In this case, I created one sample for this uh, to show you a few of the other 1.9 APIs we have. No? So for example, here I have a, we shipped many years ago an a, a, some APIs to display items, existing items in Outlook. Uh, as you can see, this, this method was not asynchronous. And by the way, Scribble provides uh, intelligence capabilities and all that beautiness. Uh, uh, now we added in the 1.9, we added async versions of these methods. The problems that these methods used to have is that uh, it was not reliable to know if, if the item was open or not. And this was specifically critical when you were actually creating items using the graph, like you see in this, in this code sample, and then uh, displaying the item after creating it. So the item potentially, if the call to the graph gets delayed, you will not be able to see this item and you were not able to know the, the results of that. So let me show you uh, how that works. Uh, beautiful things about script live is that then you can actually run the, this actually the script that I'm writing right now. Uh, and as you can see here, this, this is a very simple snippet. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing here is to, uh, just gonna create a draft uh, using the REST APIs. So when I click on this button, what it's gonna happen is that I'm gonna call the graph, I'm gonna create a new draft item, and I'm gonna show it right here. You see, did you see the last game? I opened this guy and as you can see, uh, let me close it here. You can see here's the EWS that we created for this item. So basically if I copy this, and I try to open it, I can do it, you know, using the new API and the old API. So there you go, it works, the new API works and the old API works as well, okay? Now what happens if I delete this draft? If I go to my drafts folder, uh, let me open this in a new window. There's a draft here. If I delete this draft, what happens is that if I call the old API, it's just not gonna open. I don't know what happened here. However, if I call the new ones, given that I have this method to check what happened, I can know exactly that it failed. And that is just a glimpse of what is script lab. Okay, I hope that you find the demos useful. And now I would love to switch gears and have Hitesh share with you everything you need to know about event-driven add-ins and associated scenarios. Take it from here, Hitesh. Hello, everyone. My name is Hitesh Manwar, and I'm the program manager with the Office Platform team. Thanks, Juan, for giving us a glimpse of what's new that's coming on Outlook. In the next half of this session, I'll talk about the new and exciting ways to launch add-ins on Outlook. And followed by that, I'll also talk about some of the scenarios that are possible with it. After that, we have one of our gold partners, Code2, joining us and showing the demo of one of their uh, signature solution, uh, which uses the new Outlook capabilities. Right, so let's get on to it. So up until now, the typical way to operate Outlook add-ins on the mail compose or appointment window was that you would go to new message, start writing an email, and then realize that, hey, you need some data from your Outlook add-in. It could be to add an email template or it could be even to add a meeting invite. 
You will then find the add-in, open the task pane, and finish your desired operation. In the example shown here, it's the Zoom add-in that is open to set up an online meeting. And if you happen to use the specific add-in frequently, you would pin the add-in for easier access. This ensured that the add-in is available every time you compose an email. Now, task pane modes are great if you have multiple operations to perform or some options to choose. But if you just want to perform a specific operation, you would just find the add-in button for that and launch it. This mode is called the UI-less mode, wherein you are directly completing the add-in operation without opening any task pane. Do note that as shown by Juan on his previous slides, in all of these modes, in order to achieve you, your tasks from add-in, you need to have a task pane open or manually click on the UI-less add-in. But we know that at times, you forget to add that meeting invite for that very important meeting or that specific template for a serious customer escalation. Or you could be part of a legal organization where all mails need to have specific disclaimer that comes from an add-in. Basically, all the tasks that need to be done uh, very frequently. And chances are that you miss doing them at times. And this point, as a user, you might think, uh, wouldn't it be great if the add-ins can launch automatically every time you composed an email? And this is where the event-activated add-ins come into play. To put it simply, uh, event-activated capability allows add-ins to launch automatically based on events. Here's a simple example that demonstrates the power of event-activated add-ins. Consider a scenario in which you have to add a recipient on your mail from the Outlook add-in. This could be an email address where you log all your outgoing mails. If you have to do it from an Outlook add-in, you will have to click on new message and followed by that, find the add-in and click on it to launch it. And then the recipient gets added on the recipient field. The same task can be achieved via event activated add-in as well, where the add-in can subscribe to the on compose event, which occurs when you click on the new message. The recipient can then be intelligently and automatically added to the mail that you want to send. You can clearly see that the user did not have to launch any add-in button to complete this operation. For clarity, you can even see the comparison side by side on this slide, where add-ins are manually launched versus when they launch automatically using events. As you can see, it's, it's just more seamless when done with event activated add-ins, isn't it? Now that you have seen what event activated add-ins are, let's understand what are the characteristics or properties of this new feature. First off, as visible on the demos, these add-ins launch automatically without any user initiation. Add-ins can launch themselves based on the predefined event and the surface. Second, again pretty evident from the demo, the add-ins operate in a UI-less fashion unlike a task pane operation. Next, the add-ins are short running in nature. The Outlook platform will terminate these add-ins after five minutes. So after the event activates an add-in, it will have five minutes to complete its operation. Furthermore, these add-ins can launch on compose mode events, implying the events which occur when the user writes an email. And lastly, we are blocking any APIs that can cause UI changes on Outlook. For example, display APIs will not work with event activated add-ins. This is to ensure that the user experience is top-notch. However, to compensate for this, we are providing changes to the notification API so that the add-ins can provide visual clues to the user. I hope now you understand what event-activated add-ins are. Now let me show you how you can enable your add-ins to make use of it. For developers out there, remember the part where Juan spoke about the manifest that is needed to create web add-ins? Yeah? So that's where you have to make changes to make sure the add-ins work with new event-driven model. There are two new nodes that needs to be defined on the add-in manifest. First one, called the runtime element, specifies the location of the HTML and the JavaScript file that will run when the add-in launches. The second node, called the launch event, specifies a new extension point. This extension point is used by the add-in to define the event and the surface on which it wants to launch. For example, if the add-in wants to work on every appointment that gets created by the user, it should specify the launch event type as on new appointment organizer on its manifest. 
Additionally, for now, only the desktop form factor is supported and the new nodes should come under the version overrides. Now that I have explained how this feature works and what you should do to enable them, let's talk about one of the compelling scenarios that is possible using the new event activated add-ins. And that's called the online signatures. For many organizations, having a uniform signature for all their employees for branding reasons and marketing campaigns is essential. You can see a sample signature here on the slide. Till now, this was possible only via COM add-ins. But now, with event activated add-ins, the admin defined online signature can be achieved using Outlook add-in as well. The add-in launches on Mail Compose and using event activated feature seamlessly stamps the admin defined signature for the end user. This way, the add-in signature mimics the native Outlook signature user experience. And to enable this scenario, we have also provided specific APIs, which are already out on preview, by the way, uh, both on Outlook Web and Windows. Now let me explain what these APIs are. First off, set signature async. This API allows the add-in to stamp the admin defined signature directly on the mail canvas when the user composes an email. Next, get compose type async. Now, as a user, we don't want same signature for our new mail or reply or forward, right? We want different signatures to be there. So this API allows the add-in to know the type of mail compose that the user is composing and stamp the signature accordingly. The next two APIs that you see, uh, which are is client signature enabled async and disable client signature async, these APIs override the native Outlook signature setting so that the individual's signature that they can set on their Outlook is overridden by the admin defined signature from the add-in. And lastly, we are also providing some changes to the notification API and we are calling it clickable info bar. This allows the task panes to be launched from the notification directly so that if the user wants to select a different signature, uh, they can just click on the notification, launch the add-in and set the signature directly from the task pane. To talk more about this exciting scenario and to give an end-to-end -end demo of the event activated add-ins and the signature APIs, we have Simon, who is the CEO of Code2 joining us to demonstrate their signature solution. Over to you, Simon. Thank you, Hitesh. Hello from Europe. My name is Simon and I am the CEO of Code2. We are an independent software vendor and a Microsoft partner who delivers solutions for Microsoft 365 to over 80,000 businesses in 150 countries. We are a multi-product company. We create software that automates processes in Microsoft 365 like migration and backup but what we are most known for is our email signature software. This is a solution we've been constantly developing and optimizing from day one, always focused on making it a top-notch signature management product on the market. The product is called Code2 Email Signatures for Office 365, and it's a cloud-based service for centralized email signature management. It sits on Microsoft Azure in the same data center as your Microsoft 365 tenant to ensure secure and seamless experience. So why do companies need our email signature service? Here's the top reasons. One person or a group of people in an organization can design a signature and deploy it company-wide to all users within minutes. The signature will work with all email clients, including mobile devices, automatically without any end user interaction. The signature is not only unified across the organization, but also thanks to Azure AD integration, it's personalized. So the placeholders in the signature are always automatically turned into sender's details like first name, last name, job title, etc. Pictures can be embedded, which means they are always present in the email body and recipients do not have to click download pictures to see them. The signatures can be dynamic. In other words, you can have different signatures for internal and external emails or different signatures for different departments. The built-in HTML editor makes it possible to create HTML signatures without any IT experience, and many, many more. So how does our solution work? You can choose one of three signature modes, server-side, client-side, and combo. The server-side mode works with all email clients, including mobile devices, but as you can see, the signature is added after the email is sent. For some users, it's totally fine, but a lot of users would rather see the signature as they type an email. That's where the client-side mode comes in. This mode adds the signature as you compose an email in Outlook for Windows. Users like this mode a lot because it gives them full control of their signature. 
They can modify it, select another one, or even remove it. But as you can see, this mode currently does not support other email clients. So if you want to have your cake and eat it, you can use the combo mode. In the combo mode, the signatures in Outlook are visible as you type an email, whereas emails sent from other email clients get the signature at the server level. But until now, even in combo mode, to see signatures as you type an email, you had to install a COM Outlook add-in that saved predefined signatures to local Outlook settings. But the COM add-in has some downsides. It has to be installed manually by individual users or deployed by an admin via GPO. It's not automated. Each user has to log in to Microsoft 365 to sync the signatures with Outlook. It only supports the Windows desktop version of Outlook and it only writes signatures to Outlook settings so dynamic signatures are not supported. Because of these limitations, we looked at the web add-in experience and capabilities because web add-ins can be deployed from within Microsoft 365 Admin Center, which makes the process both hyper-simplified and transparent for the users. The add-ins are tied to their account, not a device, so they're automatically enabled on all devices. Web add-ins not only support Outlook for Windows, but also Outlook for Mac and Outlook on the web, and they support dynamic signatures and much more. So what we did was that we integrated the web add-in experience with the server-side mode. However, until now, the web add-in could only display the preview of the signature for the sender. It could not actually insert the signature to the body of an email. The event-based activation and the signature APIs the Outlook add-in team have been working on have been the missing technology pieces we needed to be able to deliver the next generation client-side signature solution that I am about to show you now. The idea is very simple. I have to create signature rules and designs on the code to site. They will be saved in Azure. Then go to Microsoft 365 Admin Center to deploy the modern web add-in to all or selected users with just a few clicks. When these users open Outlook and start creating a new message, Outlook will communicate with Code2 and pull the latest signature or signatures and add them to the email body in real time. Let's see how this works. Just to give you some context, let's start from a standard Outlook signature experience we all know. This is an account that has a simple test signature set up in Outlook settings. When I compose a new email, my signature shows up just beneath the email body, right? That's how it works. But this is just a signature created for this particular user. It's not dynamic. It doesn't have any AAD data. It cannot be managed by an admin across the entire organization and so on. So let's see how it works with Code 2 and the modern web add-in. This is Code 2 Manage Signatures app. It's the tool where you or your marketing team can design signatures and specify which users should get them and when. It has a built-in what you see is what you get editor with a wide library of templates. So it's really easy to design good looking signatures with banners, social media icons, rating buttons, and more. As you can see, I already created three different client-side signatures and configured them to apply to all users in my organization. Each signature contains placeholders. They will be turned into the sender's AAD information once the signature is added. When I click Save, this configuration is now updated in our email signature service in Azure and is also synced with the Outlook web add-in. And that's it. The signatures are now live in my organization. So let's head back to Outlook to see what happened. This is the same account with the same native Outlook signature I created a couple of minutes ago. So when I start composing a new message, see what happens. Boom! This is the signature from the Manage Signatures app. So what happened exactly? We used the so-called event-based activation, which automatically triggered the web add-in to add the signature to the body of the email. When I click the new message button, Outlook called our own new message composed event handler, which pulled a default signature for my account from the code to service in Azure and added it directly to the email body via the signature API. At the same time, it also used the API's capability to override the native Outlook signature. This means that when you centrally manage the signatures in your organization, you do not have to worry about the existing Outlook signatures because the web add-in will disable them. But that's not all. I can also use the new clickable info bar available here to open the add-in task pane and get even more features. As you remember, I created three signatures for all users in my organization. So these signatures are also available for this particular user. The first one on the list is the default one and will always be added automatically. But I can 
change it and choose a different signature. For example, this one might be used for internal correspondence because it's simplified. And this one, when I need to show my role as a security officer in the company. Note that the signature API recognizes where the email body ends. And when I type my message, it only replaces the signature, leaving my message intact. But that's not it. There's more. If I go back to the Manage Signatures app, I can, for example, choose this signature to be added by default to new messages only, and the second one to be added by default to replies and forwards. This means that whenever I start a new conversation, I will automatically get a complex, fully branded signature. But when I continue the email thread, so when someone replies and I respond to that email or forward it, the simplified signature will be added automatically. As you can see, the event-based activation and the signature APIs open a brand new world of possibilities because now web add-ins can be used to fully interact with emails in real time. Plus, we all get super easy deployment options and a multi-platform capability, which is a must as far as the Microsoft 365 rapidly growing user base is concerned. All the features I have just presented will soon be available for all Code 2 customers. What's more, we are now working with Microsoft to add even more automation to client-side signatures. Soon, the Outlook add-in will dynamically change your signature depending on the recipient. For example, your German clients will automatically get a German signature, and so on. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching this. Over to you, Hitesh. Thank you, Simon. That was an awesome demo of event-activated add-ins and the signature APIs. I, for one, am waiting eagerly for the new features of the Code 2 add-in. Right. So, folks, the Code 2 add-in uh, that you just saw uh, is a great example of the capabilities of web add-in. Uh, from its multi-platform capabilities uh, to the ease of deployment, the value proposition to the organizations can be huge. Furthermore, with the new capabilities, uh, there is now a legitimate way for COM add-ins to migrate to web add-ins for the signature solution. Moving on, if you're wondering whether you can try this cool new feature, the answer is resounding yes. The OnCompose event, which Simon just showed, is available for preview on Outlook Web. You can test it by creating your demo tenants and assigning beta users to receive monthly targeted release updates and those users should receive this feature. We are not stopping here. We will soon follow it up with preview capability on Windows Outlook as well. Do keep a watch on our documents for more information. Additionally, we plan to bring this capability on Mac as well, and it will come up after the Windows Outlook. And if you're wondering whether you can learn more about this topic, head over to the link here. It gives detailed instructions to enable the preview capabilities and the event activated add-ins. The examples you saw so far were for the on-compose events, but we are not stopping there. There's more coming along the way. We plan to have new events on the compose mode of Outlook. To start with, we have the recipient change event coming on both mail and appointment. With this event, the add-in can launch whenever there is a recipient which is added or removed from the to or the CC field when the user composes an email. Similarly, we have an attachment change event, which is again coming on both mail and appointment. And this event can trigger an add-in whenever there is an attachment which is added to the mail or removed from the mail. Followed by that, we have two events which are coming on the calendar mode, uh, which is the appointment time change and appointment recurrence change. So you might have an add-in which works on the calendar mode and helps users set up some time for the meeting. And these two events can really come in handy at those times. And lastly, we have an info bar dismiss event coming up. This event will launch the add-in whenever the user dismisses a notification message that comes on the mail compose. We feel that there are many scenarios which are possible with this planned additional events. Right. Let me show you a few examples here. What you see in screen is an extension of the signature scenario that Simon just described. Using this event, the add-in can define a rule such that a separate signature is assigned when an external recipient is added. You can clearly see that when a recipient is added on the CC field and it's an external one, the signature that gets added is a detailed signature. Or as Simon mentioned, you can even use the recipient's language to change the signature. And how will you get this language? You can even make graph API calls from the add-in 
when it launches using the event activated mode. Now, there are many scenarios possible with the recipients, right? And we will leave the imagination totally up to you. Another example that we have here is with the attachment change event. You can be a cloud storage vendor out there and you may want to nudge your users to use cloud attachment instead of sending attachments as a file. You can do that using notification messages from the web add-in whenever an attachment over a certain size is added. Your add-in can know about the size of the attachment whenever it is added to the mail canvas. And you can use this information to nudge users to do certain tasks, right? Again, the attachment changed event also has many implications and scenarios, and we will leave the decision and the imagination totally up to you. So that's all for the new feature that's coming on Outlook add-ins. Now, what we want from you folks is to give us feedback on this new capability. However, if you are new to web add-ins, head over to the first link here, aka.ms Outlook add-in overview, to learn more about web add-ins and get started with building your first add-in. If you want to try out any of the new features that we just explained, do visit the preview section of the Outlook add-ins following the link here, aka.ms preview Outlook add-in. And if you want to configure your add-in to work with the event activated mode, head over to the documentation at aka.ms event activated add-ins. We have detailed blog to help you get started there. Also, reach out to us for any and every kind of feedback. You can share your concerns by going to github.com office dev. We want to hear from you about the new or the existing capabilities on Outlook platform. Furthermore, if you have new feature requests on Outlook web add-ins, head over to our user voice link and share your ideas. We are always listening there. Lastly, don't forget to tune in to our monthly community call. It's the best way to keep up to date with what's new coming on Outlook add-ins. Looking forward to see exciting scenarios and hear your feedback. So that's all from our side. Thank you for your time. We hope you enjoyed this session as much as we did and found it useful. We will catch you on the next one.